Good evening, you're watching News on 2. I'm Jessica Lee. Amanah Saham Nasional Berhad or ASNB has declared an income distribution of 6.5 sen a unit and a bonus of 0.5 sen for Amanah Saham Bui Putra or ASB for the financial year ending 31st of December 2018. For financial year 2017, ASB made a distribution payout of 7.25 sen per unit comprising a dividend of 7 sen a unit and bonus of 0.25 sen a unit. Per Modela National Berhad or PNB Group Chairman Tan Sri Dr Zeti Attar Aziz said this represented a payout of seven cent a unit, involving a total payout of about 10.7 billion ringgit that would benefit 9.6 million unit holders who own 155 billion units in ASB. She also said that 2018 has been a challenging year for both the global and domestic financial markets, weighed down by the further normalization of the U.S. monetary policy and the consequent fund outflows from the emerging markets, as well as the growing concern arising from the international trade tension. The growth for the global economies has peaked uh, in 2018. And while we see that the U.S. economy remain relatively strong, the pace of growth of other economies have slowed, uh, although modestly, throughout 2018. She said this in her speech during the announcement of the income distribution for the funds in Kuala Lumpur today. Nasri Dr. Zeti also announced the income distribution for ASNB's variable price fund, Amana Saham National ASN, of 3.25 cent a unit for financial year 2018, representing a dividend yield of 5.1% based on the net value of the fund as of 20th of November this year. The total estimated payout for ASN is about 59.7 million ringgit, which would benefit over 1.2 million unit holders with more than 1.8 billion units in the fund. What the potential uh, return and potential dividends that we can hope to receive in 2019, I would like to emphasize that this needs to depend on the performance of our investments. Despite the challenging market environment and building on its strong foundation, PNB remained resilient and had sustained its financial performance this year, with assets under management increasing by 6.8% to 295.2 billion ringgit, while the performer net income of PNB and its unit trust funds was 15.3 billion ringgit for the period up to 30th of November 2018. Amana Dana Anak Malaysia 2050 or Adam Limapulo, introduced in January by the Barisan National Government will be discontinued by year end. Under the scheme, a baby born within 1st of January 2018 until 2022 will receive initial savings of 200 ringgit via units of ASB for Buinputras and Amana Saham Satu Malaysia or AS1M for non Buinputra as long as the child is registered within a year from the date of birth, but the savings could only be withdrawn after the child reaches 18 years old. Uh, Pramodela National Berhad PNB, uh, which introduced the scheme, acknowledged that the response for the program has been relatively low, with only about 25% of the babies born in the year 2018 registered thus far. The group chairman, Tan Sri Zeti Akhtar Aziz, said given the fact that the current government's financial position needs to be strengthened, it would not be able to allocate further funds. We will complete. For the year 2018, so all those born within uh, this year can participate in that program. So it will be concluded at the end of this year. She said this after announcing the income distribution for Amana Saham Putra and Amana Saham Nasional for the financial year ending 31st of December 2018. She said the government allocated 10 million ringgit for Adam Limopulo and the fund has been fully utilized. Approximately 190,000 heads of households earning below 900 ringgit a month will benefit from the food bank program implemented by the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs or KPDN HEP to ease their burden while at the same time reduce food wastage in the country. It's Mr. Datuk Sri Saifuddin Asutyon Ismail said the collection and distribution of surplus food is a jointly organized program by hotels 
factories and major hypermarkets in the country. And it will be officially launched in Pulau Pinang tomorrow. Prasyarat kejayaannya ialah uh, pihak penyumbang komited uh, untuk memberi sumbangan. Dan pihak penerima tidak perlu risau kerana semua makanan itu adalah makanan yang selamat untuk dimakan. Ya. Walaupun istilahnya lebihan makanan yang tak habis terjual, uh, tapi kita sahkan ianya adalah selamat untuk dimakan. Kalau ianya lebihan makanan dari dapur hotel, kita ambil yang halal dan kita bawa ke Central Kitchen. Speaking to reporters after officiating a unity program with the collaboration of Ing Sheng Syndrome Berhad in Cheras, Datuk Sri Saifuddin said volunteers deployed by KPDNHEP will reheat the unsold or surplus food at the central kitchen before distributing them to the target groups. He added that the program is expected to be rolled out across the country at the beginning of next year. The Kuala Lumpur High Court today ordered ex-FGV Holdings Berhad Chairman Tan Sri Muhammad Isa Abdul Samad and eight other individuals to file their respective defence statements in a suit by the company. Now, FGV Holdings seeks to recover 514 million ringgit in losses in relation to the acquisition of Asia Plantation Limited or APL in 2014. Speaking to reporters during case management in chambers, attorney Lavinia Kumarendran, who represents Dan Sri Muhammad Isa, said High Court Deputy Registrar Farah Huhada Ramli had ordered all nine defendants to file their statements by 31st of January next year. The eight other defendants are FGV Holdings ex-CEO Datuk Muhammad Emir Mavani Abdullah, ex-senior general manager of Downstream Cluster Rasidan alias Muhammad, ex-Chief Financial Officer Ahmad Tifli Mohamad Talha and five ex-FGV non-executive directors including Tan Sri Ismi Ismail, Tan Sri Wan Aziz Wan Abdullah, Tan Sri Sulaiman Mabub, Datuk Nozira Bahari and Datuk Fazlo Rahman Ibrahim. Case management is set to take place on the 12th of February 2019. <coughs> Lavinia also said that the nine defendants had received a copy of the statement of claim, while five others have not. They include ex-Vice President of Business Development of Downstream Cluster, Fariza Mokta, and four ex-FGV non-executive directors, Dato Omar Salim, Dato Noor Esanuddin Muhammad Harun Nash Rashid, Dato Yahya Abdul Jabbar, and Dato Fazul Ahmad. According to a statement from FGV Holdings to Bursa Malaysia, they filed a suit following the loss suffered as a result of the defendant's failure to carry out their responsibility. Pulau well, Pinang Police Chief Dato A. Tai Vegan has confirmed that the main suspect in the killing of a woman and injuring two others at a frozen food factory in Kampong Selamat, Tasik Gelugor, Pulau Pinang, has been arrested early this morning in Selangor. Suspek telah pun ditangkap pada awal pagi ini lebih kurang tiga pagi, tiga setengah pagi dan uh, dia telah dibawa ke SPU dan akan diriman. Kemudian uh, kita anggap kes ini selesai uh, kerana suspek yang terlibat dalam kes pembunuhan ini telah pun ditangkap. The suspect, an Indonesian national, was arrested in Petaling Jaya, Selangor after a team of police personnel from the Pulau Pinang and Selangor Criminal Investigation Department, or CID, surrounded the Mentari Court apartment area where the suspect was believed to be hiding. In a 3.30pm incident on Wednesday, the suspect attacked three of his colleagues with a machete. A woman was killed after being stabbed 32 times on the head while the other two were in critical condition. Further investigations revealed that the suspect then fled by taxi. Malaysia had attracted a total investment worth 139.3 billion ringgit in the manufacturing, services and primary sectors over the first nine months of 2018, an 18% increase from the 118.1 billion ringgit approved in the same period last year. The Malaysian Investment Development Authority, or MIDA, said approved foreign direct investments, or FDIs, increased by 109.7% to 64.1 billion ringgit between January and September this year, from 30.5 billion ringgit in the previous corresponding period.
Now, Maida said in a statement, the growth was mainly driven by the manufacturing sector, which recorded a strong increase of 249.4% in January to September 2018. Approved FDIs in the primary sector rose by 99.3%, which indicated that investor confidence in Malaysia remains high despite the challenging global economic environment. It added that domestic investments led with 75.2 billion ringgit, contributing 54% to the total approved investments in all three sectors. Now, Maida said the government will continue to ensure that the country's economy remains on a sustainable growth tra trajectory by providing a conducive and favourable environment to attract investors and businesses. Mass Rapid Transit Corporation, or MRT Corp, has become the first Asian infrastructure developer to achieve Level 2 accreditation by the Building Information Modeling, or BIM. Now, the accreditation, which was presented to MRT Corporation by Lloyd's Register, a leading international classification association providing professional services in engineering and technology, recognizes the use of BIM Level 2 in the construction of the MRT Sungai Bulo Serdang Putrajaya or the SSP line. In a statement released, MRT Acting Chief Executive Officer Datuk Najmuddin Abdullah said the accreditation given is a huge achievement not only for the MRT SSP project but for the country's construction industry as a whole. Now, he also said the MRT Corporation is the largest infrastructure developer in the country and is also well positioned to spearhead the digital future in the construction industry in the country. BIM is a set of digital tools that can manage construction projects' effectiveness and has been used by the, the Architecture, Engineering and Construction or AEC industries in Malaysia. The idea to implement BIM in Malaysia was introduced by the Director of Public Works Department, PWD, in 2007. A total of 274,639 rubber smallholders registered with the Rubber Industry Smallholders Development Authority, or RISDA, will receive the monsoon season aid of 600 ringgit. In a statement released, Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng said the payment will be made in two installments, 300 ringgit at the end of this year and the remaining 300 ringgit early next year. Lim also said that the aid will benefit 255,997 rubber smallholders who are also landowners, while 18,642 are non-landowner rubber tappers working on plots smaller than 2.5 hectares. He also said that Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad approved the allocations as he was committed to provide aid to the rubber smallholders during the monsoon season. The Finance Minister further noted that the allocation will be channeled to the Economic Affairs Ministry as the Ministry regulates RISTA. Tourism, Mass and Culture Minister Dato Mohamadin Katapi said all tourism premises operators have been exempted from the 70 ringgit tourist accommodation premises registration fee from the 1st of January to 31st of March next year. Now, he said tourism premises include hotels, resorts, lodging houses, hostels and homestays across Malaysia. Dato Muhammadin Katapi said 1,700 tourist unregistered premise operators are urged to take this opportunity and quickly register before applying for a business license with local authorities. Yes, yes, exemption only, yes. Yeah, for three months, yeah, then we back to normal. So, please, you know, for those um, belum lagi berdaftar, daftar lah cepat sikit, you know, sebelum, sebelum kita balik pergi biasa. Malaysia targets a total of 28.1 million international tourists, generating an income of 92.2 billion ringgit next year. Moreover, he said the ministry is also studying the revision of the national cultural policy formulated by a resolution of Congress in 1971. He said after 47 years, it was time to review and reformulate appropriate policies concerning arts and culture. Dato Muhammad Ingitapi said this today after officiating an engagement session with industry players in Putrajaya.
National Under-19 striker Mohamed Hadi Fayed Abdul Razak will be playing his trade with Japan's J-League Division 2 club, Fajiano Okayama FC, after signing a one-year contract. Hadi had undergone two trials with the Japanese club in September and November and impressed the club enough to sign him on for the coming season. When met after the contract signing ceremony at the Masada Okayama Training Centre, Hadi said he was thrilled with the prospect of playing against the best in the J2 League and promised to give his all for club and country. Uh, memang kompetitif lah kalau mana-mana kelab saya pergi memang ada, akan ada penye, uh, striker ni ada satu tempat yang uh, uh, kena, kena kena score goal dan kena perform well lah kalau untuk, untuk dapatkan tempat di situ jadi saya harap saya akan buat yang terbaik dan uh, harap ada peluang lah untuk saya bermain dan saya akan buat yang terbaik lah. The signing of the 1.88 meter tall striker to the J2 League proved that Malaysia is not short of football talents, which bodes well for the future of Malaysian football in general. Meanwhile, Fajiano Okayama FC general manager Tokuhiko Suzuki said Hadi's polite demeanor and positive attitude were among the attributes that led to the club's decision to sign him. Suzuki said if Hadi could maintain those characteristics plus improve on his overall understanding of the game, he might just get the nod from the first team coach Tetsu Nagasawa. Suzuki said he was also impressed with the Paragborn player's ability to easily mingle with his new teammates and coaching staff. He was pleasantly surprised with Hardy's ability to speak basic Japanese phrases despite having learned the language only recently. Hadi himself said he will try to brush up on his Japanese so that he can interact with his mostly Japanese teammates as this would make it easier for the club to ease him into the team. Hadi is expected to return to Malaysia soon before joining the club for the new season in mid-January. It must be pointed out that Hadi has a tough task ahead as he has to vie for the first 11 spot with 30 others, including the club's import players from Brazil and Korea. And that concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, ASNB declares 7 cent income distribution for ASB with a total payout of 10.7 billion ringgit. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for more updates. Till then, I'm Jessica Lee. Thank you for watching.